Ghost Hole Magazine welcomes in Pekka from Brother Fire Tribe. How are you doing today? Thank you very much. I'm doing good. Good to talk. Yeah, of course. Congrats uh, on the new album. I'm really excited to chat about it. That's uh, Feel the Burn coming out on the uh, OMN label on September 18th. Um, such a fun band. Uh, I've actually been following the band for quite a while. It's a really fun, I think a really, uh, you know, a lot of uh, heavy metal is very serious and uh, we live in very ridiculous times and tenuous times, but uh, I like I like music that also doesn't take itself super seriously and can have fun, um, you know, which is also very, you know, very Finnish <laughs> in my experience. You guys are all about the fun. <clears throat> yeah, well, I think you uh, you nailed it there. I mean, absolutely. I don't, you know, um, despite what we've what we've done, uh, you know, ever since the beginning, I've I've never really considered this band as a heavy metal band. You know, but you know, uh, the background is obviously in the kind of hard rock that was. Uh, was put out in the 70s and, and 80s so that's that's definitely where we come from but it's just you know the main point has always been putting out the kind of music that that we feel is uh is cool and uh and and let's keep the focus on on having fun exactly like you said I dig it. I dig it. Just for the fans that may not be familiar with the band, and, and of course, like, fun doesn't mean not serious and not excellent musicianship and not great recording, but if you, but we'll talk about the record in a second. If you can, just, like, give the, the origin story of the band for a second, how the band came together. Yeah, well, back in the day, I think it was uh, early 2000s, I guess. Me and the keyboard player, we had a, a first series band and, and we had uh, two albums with that band and, and really tried really, really hard to uh, to make something out of it. But it was, uh, you know, like in most cases, it was just a lot of uh, banging our heads against the wall and uh, it led to nothing, basically. So when that band kind of died, because we went through the uh, the traditional small label telling us what to do what kind of music to play and uh, we wanted to do the the kind of uh, very hard rock kind of thing and that was what the band was all about but they kind of pushed us into you know doing uh flavor of the month kind of thing and we were young guys i mean that's what we did but we were really pissed off actually so uh, so when that band just slowly faded away in the early 2000s, uh, and Thump, a keyboard player, we just got together and, you know, the mindset of, uh, okay, let's start writing the kind of music we like and let's not shit whether somebody likes it or not. And then, lo and behold, you know, uh, Ampu, uh, Ampu Warren and had just moved to this small town where we're from, and we met him through mutual friends and, uh, and he kind of jumped, jumped in, and uh, you know this is this is cool what you guys are doing, and if I'm joining, and yeah, of course. So the whole band kind of started out as a as a unhappy project, you know, just sitting down having a few beers and and making those demos, and and all of a sudden we just realized that there's an album worth of uh, material, and and somebody crazy enough to want to sign us, so. So it was just a fun, fun little project between friends that just got out of hand. You know? So that's the uh, that's how the whole thing started. That's the best way, uh, a thing that got out of hand in a good way. Of course, always. Right on. And uh, yeah, I love um, again the the music is uh, you know again it's like hard rock, very like you said, seventies and eighties influenced. Um, uh, were there like certain bands that you just like uh, go return to just as a fan that also inspires the music you make? Well, it's, you know, we all have, uh, we've never really actually talked about, you know, influences with this band. We've always just, everything that we've ever done has been really spontaneous, but, you know, speaking for myself, it's, it's obvious that you have your, you know, the biggest 
hard rock, rock, heavy rock acts from the 70s and 80s that influenced, you know, I think I'm, you know, out of these guys, I'm, I'm the most into kind of a lighter AOR side of the thing. But, you know, you just mention any of any any of those great big bands from that area and, and I like it, bro. Nice. I'm, I'm the kind of person, even though obviously I'm a huge metal fan all my life, and I like a lot of other kinds of music too. And I often say like the dividing line between a great, like a great song is a great song, whether it's a pop song, you said AOR, like radio rock, basically, for those that don't remember, and um, and heavy metal or rock. There's a very, a very thin line between all of them. They're not so, we're metal and you're not. Like, I've never been that way as a person and a fan or a journalist. So I think you guys are the same way. Like, you can tell when you listen to this record or your previous stuff, like, oh, these are guys that just love a good song, love a hook, love a catchy melody, you know? That's the thing. Yeah. Spot on. I mean... <laughs> Like you said, I I don't care uh, if it's a if it's a techno song, a acid house, or what have you. If it's a great song, it's a great song, and I like it. You know, I don't really care what it is, but I, but I always, you know, I'm always after uh, the quality of uh, of songwriting, and there's a hook, then I'm hooked. You know? I I often like to say that you know as much as I love heavy metal and swords and dragons and, you know, Satan and all those fun topics about metal. But like, you also, like, we're all human beings, right? Like, we all need, like, a little boost of energy, confidence, like uh, a motivational speaker to yell at us. Yeah. Sometimes. And that's what I love about these songs. It's, like, very, you know, I salute you, uh, you know, love is beautiful, chariot of fire. These are, like, inspirational songs. They're, like, not, you know, they're, like, very, they pump you up, which I really yeah. like because it's different than everything else. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. I mean, we learned a lot from the Rocky IV soundtrack, you know. So we had that. <laughs> so we have that guideline within the band when we're writing songs, and and we, when we're you know thinking whether this cuts it or not, you know. So we have this. Uh, if it makes you do push-ups, it's it's good enough. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, I love, um, I, like, all the keyboard stuff is, uh, you know, it's like, a, a t like obviously, the modern, you know, performance, but, uh, like, a, a lot of the keyboard sounds remind me of, like, just the classic 80s Jan Hammer, uh, Miami Vice soundtrack, which, you know, everybody, or, like, buddy cop movies. Like, I feel like there's a diehard movie that needs this music on it for a soundtrack that hasn't been... Exactly, I yeah. And, you know, we, we've had this, uh, up until now, we We've had this tradition of uh, uh, of putting a, a cover song from that, you know, the soundtracks from back in the day. We've always picked up one and and kind of put that on the, the album. But you know, this time the the whole, you know, Corona and 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 everything. We just you know, we basically just ran out of time, so we had to uh, keep our priority list where our own songs so uh, but definitely next time of course uh yeah i mean uh you know covers are fun and uh, of course they help remind people like what you like and uh you know i can only i can imagine uh how awesome some of these songs would be like some of those uh movie soundtrack songs like you said rocky four and things like that um and again like i said even the pop songs of those days it's weird kind of like the one hit wonder pop songs of yesterday, of like 30 years ago, are better produced than some of like the big rock albums today. I don't know why, but it just seems to be the case. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, that's just, I mean, basically the same guys wrote all the good stuff on those soundtracks, you know, during that period of time. And, uh, you know, there's just something about them that um, just appeals to us in a way that. You know, we always have that in the back of our minds when we're writing songs. Nice. Yeah, I think about uh, I think about that era. There's a lot of guys who were like left over, not left over, but they were like maybe the side men from the '70s rock era, right? Like the guys in Toto, who or uh, you know Journey that were the backup to Santana. There's a guy named Michael Cimbello who wrote the uh, theme song to Flashdance. He's a maniac. That guy used to play with like Frank Zappa and Santana and Chicago. So like those are, it's kind of funny, like the master musicians of like the 60s and 70s who had like a jazz background, 
could write a great pop song. And then you see in the 80s, all those like huge movie soundtracks and all that like fun, the fun yeah. music was all written by these guys who had skills. And like I said, you guys are very skilled. Like just because you like to have fun and make songs about, you know, inspirational party things and doing, you know, being pumped up. You guys are fabulous musicians. You can hear it in the songs, you know? Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's funny you mentioned those those names. I mean, you know, those are the guys we definitely look up to. Just, uh, you know, what they've done and, uh, you know, the whole spectrum of, uh, you know, them starting out doing jazz and, and then kind of swimming into different different landscaping, ending up ending up doing all those great, great soundtrack tracks from back in the day. It's just it just works for us. Nice. Uh, of course. And, uh, you know, I know it's you mentioned, the uh, you know, the current times. It's a tough time in the world. Um, you know, I, I'm glad there's new music. I say this all the time, really. Like music has been the really, you know, there's no movies to go to really right now. Uh, they're still all closed here. I'm sure most of Europe, too. So. You know, I know things are slowly starting to get back to normal, but like it's a it's a strange time. You probably have never had like a time like this in your life where you put a record out and there's nobody to go hand it to in person at a show or play a pub or a record release party or anything. Like it's just weird, right? I mean, the whole you know to start with how how the whole world can stop in two weeks is just scary and weird. But you know, everybody's in the same boat, so to speak. So. Uh, so we thought that, you know, we could easily we could have, you know, postponed and postponed until things are back to normal. But I don't think this is the new normal. We just thought that okay, we got the damn thing is ready. Let's just put it out to people and and hope that it makes them feel good, you know. And you know, what else can you do? I mean, it's a uh, it's an unfortunate situation that that we can. I mean, we're all ready and set to go, but but you know what? What can you do? Same for everybody, and that by putting this album out, it gives people something else to think about. And I just hope that you know they're uh, staying patient, and because uh, at at some point, you know. Things will get back to uh, to the point where uh, live music is possible. Indeed, and I think I you know I think about uh, Finland all the time because uh, you know I I always think about you know the cat the major cities for you know music in the world and you guys have a not just a big big scene for major international bands but like a very thriving local music scene like the small you know club music is in every club music is in every bar and so you know hopefully. Uh, you know, I'm sure I hope you and the band are well and your families are well and everything. Of course, I hope you've managed to get through this time. But, you know, I think about like all the other, you know, club owners and the sound people and merch people and tour managers. And like, you know, I, uh, we haven't done a very good job here in America of taking care of that industry. Actually, it's really bad. But uh, how do you, you know, has uh, Finland responded at all? Like the government helped out or is there like any hope that those guys will get some support until shows and things can come back to normal? All in all. You know, if you look at the the big picture, I think um, Finland has done really well compared to uh, to a lot of uh, other countries. But but it's funny you mentioned uh, this particular business. Uh, they just had uh, a big rally uh, downtown Helsinki uh, about this particular problem. And and we just hope that you know, government and the officials kind of pay attention to that. Because people, right people, because people in this uh, business are in in serious trouble, obviously. Of course, um, yeah, you know, and uh, on the plus side, I think the the, the bonus is uh, in some cases, I feel like Europe is ahead of the rest of the world because it was there first, obviously, uh, outside of Asia, and so. Maybe you guys are ahead of us on recovery, and so hopefully, and it's also because Europe is smaller and less spread out than America. Maybe that's where touring will start happening first. I have seen a lot of tours get booked. I'm sure you guys had some touring planned to support the record, and you know, I hope you get those gigs back or reschedule for next year if you can. 
Um, but I think it's a, probably a little easier also because Europe's a little more tight, tight knit and closer together, the distance between cities. So I, I hope you guys get to have your shows and get to celebrate this route record because it's so awesome and so much fun. I think people need, they need this right now. They need something not so heavy emotionally, something light, you know, we need this. Exactly. Yeah. I'm of the same opinion, definitely. And, uh, and, you know, but when it comes to, to touring, I mean, everything is, is so up in the air right now. We, we don't even talk about it because, uh, you know, the situation was, uh, it's pretty good during the summer, but now it seems that the uh, things are rising again. So, uh, so nobody knows what's going to happen. And so it's pretty pointless to even you know, try to plan anything for next year at this point, you know, keeping our fingers crossed. Though. Of course. Um, as we start to wind this down, just on a fun final note, I love anytime I talk to anybody from your part of the world, what, I love to ask this question. I feel like Finland is the capital of heavy metal and rock. And I wanted, like, why do you think that has happened? Like, why is that? Like, there's a bunch of great bands and the city, Helsinki is wonderful uh, for anybody who travels and can travel there that's not from there. But like, why do you think, if you do agree, why do you think Hels Hel you know, Finland is like literally the capital of heavy metal in the world? I've always felt this. That's, that's a great question. Maybe it's because our uh, dear neighbors, you know, Sweden, they came up with uh, something that's unbeatable in pop. So maybe we just got, you know, pissed off and started doing heavy metal to the to the point where, you know, nobody can take that away from us. Or it's also because it's, you know, it's it's cold and dark here for about 90 percent of the year. So what else is there to do than shout your brains out and play loud music? Amazing, amazing. Do you have a favorite band from Finland from your childhood or your, 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 as a young adult? Do you have like a favorite Finnish band of all time? Yeah. Anna Rocks. Yeah, I love of it. Course. Yeah. Of course. Like the, uh, the flag bearers, really. Like a lot of underrated in the rest of the world, but like fans know how great they are. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, those guys are probably, uh, you know, the biggest reason why I'm doing this. So, you know, I was. I was eight years old when I got my hands on fresh out of the oven album Two Steps from the Move by, uh, by Hannah Rocks, and, and I didn't look back. Awesome, man. I love to hear it. Thank you so much for sharing your time, Pekka. I really appreciate you. Congratulations on this record, and uh, you know, be safe, and best of luck to you guys. We'll see you hopefully on tour next year. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah.